There's a change in plans for a new restaurant proposed for Maple Grove. That change, according to Maple Grove city officials, would be a nationwide first. Shake Shack is proposing a restaurant at the shops at Arbor Lakes just east of the Red Lobster. It would be constructed on existing parking spaces. The restaurant was originally recommended for approval one year ago, but now a drive through has been added to the plans. No other Shake Shack has a drive through Maple Grove would be the first. Plans call for a two-lane drive through but the Maple Grove Planning Commission is uncomfortable with the current layout. The Planning Commission voted to table the drive through plan until its April 12th meeting, giving the project designers an opportunity to present an alternative plan. There are two other Shake Shacks in Minnesota, one in Edina and the other at the Mall of America. A Plymouth nonprofit is revamping services to better meet those in need during the pandemic. Recently, Interfaith Outreach and Community Partners made changes to its employment and case management services. Job seekers can now drop in to get help with computer skills and job searching. They can also get a one-on-one -on -one coach and training. Interfaith Outreach's case management team also split up into smaller groups to narrow focus on needs like emergency financials and housing. The core of what we do here is being available when people have immediate needs and are struggling today, but we really want to also help them to make those bigger changes to again get to a place of stability. So we're excited about this. On the 14th, Interfaith has a virtual event to tackle hunger through quality employment. Pet adoptions soared during the pandemic, and now classes on how to train your new dog are busy too. Reporter Neil Pursley went to Puppy Kindergarten to explain how it works. They're toddlers, they're, they're sponges. They learn really quick with these things, so this is a great time to get them started with their learning. Welcome to Puppy Kindergarten at the Animal Humane Society in Golden Valley. We are here to help our puppies grow into happy, confident adult dogs. Puppy Kindergarten classes are held year-round and are open to puppies 18 weeks old and younger. It's much easier to be proactive than reactive. Let's teach them that it is fun and rewarding to act politely. So I want to make sure that I can reward them as quickly as possible so they know that what they're doing is earning the treat. So when you back away, that gets you a cookie. It's just going to make life easier in the future, you know. Uh, it's worth it in the long run and, uh, you know, she needs socialization like all dogs should have. Puppy Kindergarten breaks lessons up into easily digestible bite-sized pieces. In Puppy Kindergarten, we get the puppies used to being handled like they will for nail trims and vet visits and groomers. We want them to enjoy being handled. The best way to get to our puppy's brain is through their stomach. So we're going to reach out Touch their shoulder, feed a treat. Touch their elbow, feed a treat. Touch their wrist, feed a treat. Touch their paw, feed a treat. So we rotate through crate training and house training, not jumping, how to handle mouthing, things like that. When puppies and their people complete a once a week, four week class, they graduate puppy kindergarten and are ready for level one training. Puppies do what works. So if a puppy jumps on you and that gets your attention, they're gonna keep doing that. If we don't want to be jumped on, then we want to teach a puppy a different way to ask for our attention. Kenny says that puppy kindergarten is training the humans as much as the puppies. He's a happy dog, loves, loves dogs and people, he's a lab. Um, but again, you know, things can always be better. He tugs. He, he takes off, you know, we got to work on recall, all the usual stuff. You can go to the Animal Humane Society website to find out class times and schedules. In Golden Valley, Neil Persley, CCX News. A middle school girl from Brooklyn Park is empowering women and girls through small tubes of lip gloss. And as I found out, there's a remarkable story behind the mission. My favorite is watermelon. 14-year-old Kenan Walton has always loved lip gloss. Um, coconut's also my favorite. The way it smells and the way it leaves a glossy sheen on the lips. I love like natural and coconut just really go well together. The Jackson Middle School student loves it so much she makes her own products. I pour the lip gloss base in my lip gloss bucket and add oils and flavors and smells and scents and colors and, and basically stir it together 
and put it in the tube. About a month ago, Kennan began selling her tubes of lip gloss at Lilac Boutique in Champlin. She branded it as Truly You. I chose Truly You because I want you to be truly you. Like, I want you to be you and beautiful. Kennan named every flavor after words of empowerment. I made lip gloss with different names and beautiful, courageous. I want women to feel all those things. Beautiful, courageous, compassionate, and bold. All words Kennan says she never felt when she was younger. It's never something you hear. Never heard, because the 14-year-old says she was without love and support for a long time. I am, and from like foster care, like I've been through homes, I know how it feels. Kennan was four years old when she was brought to the Hennepin County Intake Center to be placed in foster care. I basically went to intake and home after home after home. She had low self-esteem, but after getting adopted, the 14-year-old made it a mission to help girls feel empowered through her beauty products. This one is passionate. The profits from her lip gloss sales will be donated to the Hennepin County Intake Center. I want to let them know that they are powerful, they are strong, they are beautiful, they are amazing basically. And sometimes it only takes a small tube of lip gloss with a powerful message to feel exactly that. In Champlin, Pafuyang, CCX News. Three local teams were in the field for the state class 4A boys basketball tournament. Quarterfinal games this year were played at high school sites due to COVID-19. Here's Jason Melillo with highlights from Wyzetta's opening game. Wyzetta and Duluth East meeting at Osseo High School in the first round of the boys basketball state tournament. First half, Eddie Benega drives and gets the basket and the bruise for Wyzetta. Cody Williams launches and hits from behind the arc. Trojans up 19-15. But they have a hard time containing Duluth East Noah Paulson. The 6'8 senior scores 14 in the first half and leads the Greyhounds to a 42-36 lead at the break. The Trojans not horsing around to start the second half though. Benninga gets the steal and zips to the goal for another and one. Then nice ball movement by Wyzetta and Benninga hits a triple. He's on fire in the second half scoring 17. Camden Heidi nice crossover dribble drive and hits a tough shot plus the foul. A 19-2 run for Wyzetta puts them up 54-44. And the Trojans keep rolling from there. Carter Bierke hits three of his 14 points. And Benega just keeps being Benega. The senior leads all scorers with 26 points. And Wyzetta wins 78-69. The Trojans will face top seed Shakopee on April 8th at Target Center. Jason Malillo, CCX Sports. Following that game, two local squads went head-to-head -head in a thriller. Wednesday night, Maple Grove and Champlin Park met for a third time this season, this time in the state class 4A boys basketball quarterfinals. Josh Strong passes to Francis Wakoria to Dylan Gachaba for the dunk, and it's a 6-2 Champlin Park lead. Wakoria is tough to handle, and he powers in for two, and the Rebels go ahead by six on a huge night for the Mr. Basketball finalist. Quick passing from the Crimson here as they get the ball to John Hawkinson, who drives baseline, gets it up and in, and he's fouled. Maple Grove trails by one at the half, 20 to 19. Second half, and Hawkinson attacks the basket, scores and is fouled again. Hawkinson scores 20 points in the game, and Maple Grove leads by three. Later, it's the Crimson's Morgan Moore with a steal and breakaway dunk. Moore with 22 points as Maple Grove leads most of the second half. Rebels down three with time running out, and Wilcoria hits a three-pointer to beat the buzzer and tie the game, sending it to overtime. But in OT, the Crimson are the dominant team. More nice feed to Terrence Anthony Larmouth for an easy lay-in. Maple Grove outscores Champlin Park 14-5 in overtime, upsetting the state's top-ranked team 70-61. The Crimson now play Creighton Durham Hall on April 8th. The State Boys Hockey Tournament wraps up this weekend. Earlier this week, a handful of standouts from the Northwest suburbs earned recognition for their play this season. Here's Jay Wilcox. Maple Grove's outstanding season helped the Crimson land two players on the Star Tribune's first team All-Metro Boys Hockey Team. Metro Player of the Year number nine, Kyle Kukinen, missed most of last season with a broken leg, but came back with a dynamite senior season. 
Kukinen entered the state tournament with 30 goals and 42 assists. The Crimson lost just once in the regular season. He's committed to Michigan Tech. Kukinen's teammate, defenseman Henry Nelson, number 12, also made the All-Metro first team. A great skater, Nelson entered state with 10 goals and 33 assists, excelling at both ends of the ice. He's committed to Notre Dame. Maple Grove goalie Jack Winicky is a third team selection. Winicky played nearly every game this season with an 18-1 record, 1.39 goals against average, and 926 save percentage coming into state. Winicky posted four shutouts. Also on the third team, steady Wyzetta defenseman number 25, Carson Peters. The 6'3", 190-pounder had four goals and 16 assists entering the state tournament. Benil defenseman Tristan Sarsland, number six, is another third team pick. Sarsland had 12 goals and 12 assists for the Red Knights, who were runner-up to Wyzetta in Section 6AA. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. That's all for sports. I'm John Jacobson.